The Magic Leap 2 AR glasses are finally here, and honestly, these AR glasses are super, super cool. It is crazy to know that the ML1 was released four years ago, and four years later, Magic Leap 2 becomes available. And yes, Magic Leap 2 Developer Pro is available today with early access until September 29. So I spent the last week testing Magic Leap 2, and honestly, I have so much to show you, but I want to focus on a few things today. One is how does this device compare to the ML1, and two, what are some of the unique features available in the ML2, which I believe to provide something completely new to XR. And yes, one of those features is dynamic dimming. Let's take a look at the comparison between global versus segmented dimming, where global dimming, a thing is applied to the entire screen, and it allows the user to dim the entire world, versus specific portions as shown with the segmented dimming. This is really cool, right? But now let's take a look at some of the ML1 specs and versus ML2 specs to get an idea of what has changed. When the ML1 was released, one thing that was really distracting was the FOV. If you recall, ML1 FOV was 50 degrees diagonal, ML2 is 70 degrees diagonal. Display was also improved from 1280, 1960 per eye on the Magic Leap 1 versus 1440 by 1760 per eye, which gives you a noticeable improvement in image resolution. The camera also got drastically improved from ML1 to ML2. We're now getting a 12.6 megapixel out of focus RGB camera with 4K video at 30 frames per second or 1920 by 1080 video at 16 frames per second. We also now have double the number of per eye cameras for eye tracking. ML1 had one camera per eye, ML2 has two cameras per eye. The ML1 operating system was also based in Linux versus Android open source project, which is a huge benefit since Android is now widely used among developers. The architecture was also changed on the ML1 ARM NVIDIA CPUs and GPUs, which we had, to ML2 AMD x86-64. RAM and storage also are double. We're getting 16 gig instead of 8 gigs and also 128 gigs on the previous version versus 256 gigs of storage. AR glasses battery life improved from three hours of continuous use to 3.5 and seven in during a sleep mode. Controller on the ML2 is three hours, which I couldn't find exactly what it was on the ML1, but it gives you enough time to be able to use the headset and computer unit as much as you can use the controller because one is 3.5, versus three hours. The air glasses on the ML2 also are much lighter. The weight on the ML1 was 360 grams versus 260 grams for the ML2. It's not only that the weight is also lighter, but the device is beautiful. For audio on the ML2, we still get a special audio for microphones and speakers, just like we did on the ML1. Similar to ML1, the ML2 offers USB-C interfaces for the computer pack and also controller. And I'm gonna say it's called Compute Pack. I wanna make sure that that is the name because that's the name the Magic Leap is currently using. So with all those specs, I didn't mention the sensors, but the ML2 offers a lot of different sensors. And some of those sensors include a three wider FOB world camera, a depth camera, RGB camera, ambient light sensors, 4X eye tracking cameras, and also a bunch of inertial sensors, which to be honest, there's way too many sensors on this technology. So this device is loaded with a lot of technology. The controller tracking was changed a lot as well. If you recall, ML1 used a combination of EM and IMU sensors to track the six DOF posts of the controller. The new ML2 controller uses a combination of infrared LED tracking and a lightweight slam tracker running on the controller by using two grayscale cameras Controller tracking should still work even when there is no direct line of sight. So with all the technology, there must be a catch in price. And that's probably what you guys are thinking right now. But let me tell you what the pricing is gonna be. The ML2 base is currently $32.99 USD, which will be available via inside reseller to enterprise AR software developers starting in September 30, 2022. Certain countries may see it before the end of the year. Let's talk a little bit more about what it means to move to Android, right? Like if you're thinking about Magic Leap 2 moving to Android, is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? It's actually a really good thing. And let me tell you what kind of things you could start to see if you start doing development with ML2. The MLDB was replaced by Android standard ADB. The Mabu build system was replaced by Gradle and CMake, which are pretty standard during Android developers. MPKs are long gone, now we're gonna be moving to APKs. Many natively supported APIs were now replaced by Android standard NDK features such as login, 
sensor data, keyboard, mouse, permissions, battery, and lastly, you can also use Android Studio if you want to develop extensions for the ML2 SDK, including deployment and also debugging. As far as software in the ML2, you can now use the Lab 2.0, and if you remember, we had that on the ML1 already, and this tool provides a consolidated hub for all utilities, SDK, code examples that you can get for the ML2. You also get access to a device bridge where you can access the hardware, you can access logs, battery, and so on. There is also a tool called Zero Iteration, which we used to have on the ML1. It's also available on the ML2, but it basically gives you access to a mock environment so that you don't have to deploy to the device every single time. Device streaming is also available in Lab 2.0. The only bad thing about that is that you don't see dynamic dimming, which is something that I really wanted to show you, but for some reason, the device streaming doesn't support it just yet, so I'm hoping to see it in future versions of the device streaming application. So all the mentioned tools are really cool, but what about developing applications for Magic Leap 2 or games for the Magic Leap 2? Well, currently you can develop for ML2 by using Native C or Unity. With Native C, you can use Android Studio to create your own engine, which I don't recommend, but if you need to do it, you can do it, or you can extend the ML2 features for Unity via plugins. And why would you do something like that, you might ask, right? Well, the ML2 API offers more features in their C language to what is available with the Unity SDK. However, if Unity has everything that you need, there's really no reason to work with C in extending their SDK functionality because at some point they become available. So, but if you wanna use different IDEs, with Unity, you currently can use Visual Studio, you can use VS Code, Writer, or so on. Well, there you have it. Magic Leap 2 is now available. We have super crazy cool XR technology now. It is cheaper than HoloLens, which starts at 3500 USD. And without doubt, Magic Leap 2 is the most powerful AR glasses available in the market today. Tell me what you think. Do you like what you saw? Would you buy this device? Let me know in the comments below because I'm really curious to know what your take is on this video. And also, make sure that you hit the notification bell and subscribe to the channel so that I can make more videos with the ML2 and any other devices that you guys are interested in learning. Thank you very much, guys.